Hello everyone, it is finally time. The Donampachi FPGA Mr. Core has now been made public. It is no longer beta. It is no longer patron exclusive. It is now free at last, able to be downloaded and enjoyed by the masses. And I have to say, I am shocked. I am astounded. I am blown away by how much progress has been made over the past month. To the point where it is a little bit suspicious. Maybe we need to get some Lance Armstrong blood doping testing going on this guy because... How did he go so far, so quickly? EPO must have been evolved. I really don't, jokes aside, I really am impressed by how quickly the progress has been moving along because I did beta three, it feels like only a month or so ago, and it was literally the next day someone messages me and says, hey, beta four is out. I was like, well, I'm not gonna make another video the day later. And then beta five comes out, and then beta six comes out, and then the final release comes out all in the span of a few weeks it feels like so this guy must have been up all day and night working on this or maybe he had some kind of mental breakthrough i don't know what happened but it's incredible the progress that's been made so in this video i'm hopefully going to be completing my final review of this project because while there are some improvements that i think can happen overall i think the foundation of this is pretty damn solid I think there can be little tweaks here and there, but I don't know if they'll necessarily require a video. I guess we can see. But let's get started talking about what the concerns were coming into this final release based on my experiences with the betas and if they've been solved, basically. And so the first big concern coming into the final release was the sound. So for those who've been following the beta core videos here, the initial beta actually had no sound at all. So you just played it with video. And then beta 3 introduced some sound i think beta 2 might have had some sound as well but it was glitchy and crazy it would bug out it would loop in weird places it would go quiet it would go loud it'd blow your eardrums out sometimes you just hear sound effects it was pretty wild as far as what the sound was going to do it also sounded like it was being played on the other side of a flip phone from the 2000s but all of that seems to have been addressed so in my review for this public release I played through both loops of the game five times with basically all the ships except BL. But I think other than BL, I played through the entire game with all the ships, making sure everything that I could find could be evaluated and I have to say the sound. The entire time, this is like four or five hours of playing the game, I could not find any significant sound issues or anything that stood out to me. I even did some things where I'd pause it because it has a nice little pause function. I'd pause it on places that might cause glitches and stuff. but. The soundtrack kept going, it kept its loop, it kept on the rhythm. So sound, from what I hear, absolutely fantastic. And it's actually improved over Shmup Arch sound. I think that's Shmup Arch's biggest weakness when it comes to Dodonpachi is the sound emulation. It is a little bit off where it's a little bit too tinny and loud and high pitched. Whereas if you do it on MAME and if you play it on the PCB, and of course if you play it now on the Mister, it has this bassier, crunchier sound, especially on the explosions. It sounds absolutely fantastic. And the clarity is much higher. And uh, yeah, so sound has been addressed, has been fixed. So number one concern off the list. Number two concern was the visuals and sprite behavior because there had been some pretty hilarious uh, mix-ups and glitches in the previous betas. I have this one uh, beta video called the glitchiest one all of all time where about stage four the background starts to disappear and then stage five everything looks okay and then stage six the entire screen ba is basically covered in a white sheet. You can only see through these tiny little slits. You're basically playing blind. It was absolutely wild. That was fixed and addressed in the beta 3. That was a beta 2 issue. But since then, there was also a lot of other sprite issues, smaller ones, but again, something I didn't want to see in the final release, such as the health bars for the bosses would be underneath the bosses. So sometimes the boss would fly over their own health bar and that's a problem because you need to see the health bars for certain fights, especially the boss four and of course Hibachi himself to make sure you get that final point blank. That has all been fixed. Now the bosses stay underneath their health bars as intended. Another one was that sometimes the sprite layers would be a little bit confused. Like in stage four, there are these bunkers and you would fly over these bunkers and blow them up and there'd be tanks inside. Well, in the previous betas, you could see the tanks like peeking from within the bunkers, like their wheels would be hanging out. It looked crazy. Other issues were the sprite, where the stars wouldn't fall. They'd act a little bit funny. All that stuff seems to have been fixed and addressed. The stars fall, the tanks are inside the bunkers, 
the sprites are where they're supposed to be. There was times, I think, in uh, Stage 3 boss where the boss would, like, spawn on the wrong side of the screen and glitch out and kind of speed around the screen in weird ways. That was fixed. It also would move in directions it's not supposed to. And I remember in Stage 1, there's these big tanks, and they're supposed to kind of roll to the right. And in the first or so beta, and I think even in beta 3, they just held still when they needed to roll. And so that's all been fixed. Everyone's moving where they're supposed to move. They're doing what they're supposed to do. The sprites don't look crazy. So again, visuals fixed. And the biggest concern I had coming into the final, because this was going to be the make or break feature of this port, is the slowdown, accuracy, and the frame rate timing. So Noel Object, of course, knows what he's doing. He is a man of education, a man of wisdom and knowledge. And so he knew the correct frame rate for Don Pachi to begin with. And he did say in the previous betas that getting the slowdown right was kind of the final step. And I have to say, again, I played this five times through both loops. I have hundreds and hundreds of hours of experience playing Doranpachi. And I think I have a very good feeling for how the slowdown is supposed to feel in this game. And from what I could tell, the slowdown was just how it's supposed to be. It's doing what it's supposed to do. That was a big relief to me where you're in the Hall of Hell. It's slowing down how it's supposed to. You're fighting Hibachi. It's slowing down how it's supposed to. You're in stage six. It's doing what it's supposed to. And there's even smaller little uh, tells and signs like the two, three boss where it'll slow down in certain parts of the patterns and others. Again, it's all doing what it's supposed to. Same thing with Big B. So I think he's got the slowdown figured out. He's got that dialed in to just how it's supposed to be. So that's a big leap over all the other previous ports where the Saturn the uh, X360 port via Instant Brain and the PS1 port all have way too fast frame rates and the bullet speeds are too fast and the slowdown is too fast. Not so in the Mr. port, if, if it's a port or whatever. On this Mr. core, it is much more accurate. It feels like you're playing on MAME, so big kudos there. That was a huge concern of mine. So now we've got the visuals, we've got the sound, we've got the slowdown, all of those are correct. These are often things that trip up many ports. So then we got the final frontier, which is the frame rate and the input lag. And I think this one is going to be a little bit tricky for some people, but that's just the nature of the beast. So the problem with shmup ports and arcade ports across the board, you're going to find this on lots of different things, not just the mister, is how do you get these games that usually run in these wonky, bizarre frame rates, like Donanpachi that runs at 57.4 or something like that. How do you get it to behave itself? on a 60 FPS monitor. And in the past, the solution that a lot of people porting, again, like on Saturn, on PS1, on the 360, has been, well, let's just force the game to run at 60 FPS. The problem with that, in some games, you can kind of get away with it if they're like 59.8 or something, you know, fine. But in other games like Guwange on the 360 and Donanpachi, moving them up to 60 FPS causes a lot of issues with the slowdown. And so, there are different options you can do, and I'm going to give you my definitive answer of what to do. So the default option that Null Object has implemented is triple buffering. That's basically V-Sync to where it holds a frame. And so, or I, I don't know all the technical jargon, but basically it adds a frame of input lag, but it gives you a simulated 60 FPS on your monitor, but internally it's still running at 57.4 or whatever. Basically it gives you extra lag, but it gives you smoothness and it gives you the correct frame rate, the correct slowdown. However, Dodonpachi, in my opinion, is not a game that can suffer an extra frame of slowdown. This game, you need every single bit of reaction time you can get because there are certain patterns that this game forces you to react to, and Dodonpachi is a game, especially if you're playing it for score, where one mistake, end of your run. And so, stage six boss, having an extra frame of input lag on the ninja stars or in its final attack are gonna be absolutely disastrous. And so while this is the default suggestion, I say throw it in the garbage. Do not do that because luckily Null Object has implemented other alternatives. And in my opinion, if you just want something that's easy and accessible, just emulate it, right? I say if you're going all the way with the mister where you're getting this hardware, you're configuring everything, I say you need to go all the way with your setup. And so there's another option which I'm going to recommend here. If you go into your INI setting in your mister config file, there's a vsync option in there. It's defaulted to zero, which is basically use vsync or whatever, depending on the core. But then there's the magical two option. And I say switch it to two, which makes it single buffer, no extra lag, 
now you're getting PCB level response rates. It's going to act like one now. It's not going to have some extra V-Sync or anything like that. So how do you deal with this? Well, now you need to make sure your setup matches what this thing does. So there's two different routes to go, in my opinion. So the first route is simply to go with an analog display. So you could go with a VGA computer monitor CRT, or you could do a PVM CRT, or you could even do a consumer CRT. I don't know if the Mister has any kind of S video outputs, but if you have like an Extron, you can go from your Mister to your Extron to your consumer CRT. So there's that. That's the analog way of doing it. However, for me, there's a big problem with just playing on analog. While I do have this giant CRT that I love and I do enjoy playing on CRT, the issue for me is that I'm primarily a video creator and streamer. So how are you going to capture this is always a big concern of mine and kind of the biggest hurdle I've been handling today because capture cards tend to not like the idea of running 57.4 frame rates. And so again, there are two different options you can do here if you want to capture it. One is no object actually included an option to force the game to run at 60 FPS. The pro of that is that it's going to be incredibly compatible and it's not going to add extra input lag. The con of that, of course, is now the game's running at 60 FPS. You're reducing the amount of slowdown that's supposed to be there. So the game's going to be a bit faster. Certain sections are going to be a bit harder. And also just the baseline bullet speed's going to be faster. I think this is manageable, but not ideal. And so the ideal solution you have to get a little bit creative with it and you have to have the correct display. So I found that that when I went into my capture card setting, there was actually some option. This is going to depend on your capture card, but hopefully a lot of capture cards have this option. There was some option in the capture card that was forcing the feed to 60 FPS and it was causing a lot of issues. I'll show on the screen here is making my capture all crazy and look weird. But if you go in there and you disable that, then the capture card will record at the correct frame rate 57.4 or whatever. And then here's the cool part. If you have a free sync or G sync monitor, apparently the mister can do G sync or free sync or whatever it is. I guess it would be free sync in this case. Apparently the mister is capable of doing this because I was actually able to run the HDMI through my capture card into my G sync free sync monitor and it was matching up at 57. I have a little frame rate display on my monitor. It was matching up 57.4. So apparently on free sync monitors, you can connect your mister. So that's my recommendation of what you do. Make sure you're either playing this on an analog or you play this on a free sync monitor. If you don't have a free sync monitor, my solution is get a free sync monitor because you're going to run into this over and over and over. This isn't going to just be with Donanpachi. If you're wanting to play arcade games and PCBs on your digital monitor, you're just going to need to get a free sync or a variable refresh rate monitor. Otherwise, you're going to be tearing your hair out. You're going to be forcing the games to run too fast. Or you're going to be playing with extra input lag. That's what I'm saying. If you're going to go all the way of spending all this money on all the misters and all that sort of stuff, I say go all the way and make sure you have the correct monitor to match it. So that was really, really cool. What it ended up happening, this is basically like playing on Groovy Mame now to where it's running at the correct frame rate. There's no extra input lag. There's no screen tearing. It's like you're playing the shmup arch basically. And so I was very, very pleased with this. And so my final verdict on this public release is it gets the mark MSX stamp of approval. Yes, this is an accurate, valid way to play Donanpachi. Just make sure you change your V-Sync to 2, removes your V-Sync, and get it on an analog display or get it on a free sync monitor. Have at it. And then some small criticisms that I think he could pretty easily address. The first one is that he added this cool feature to where on the international ROM, he added this skip the boot screen feature. So now you don't have to go through the full extent of the jam boot screen. And also it enabled C button, absolutely vital. However, the problem is, and I've mentioned this in previous ones, the international version is cool and everything, but it's actually not the version people play competitively. The correct version is the Japanese one. And he did include Japanese MRA. So you can play the Japanese ROM on this, which is great, except that C button is not enabled. So one small tweak he needs to do is he needs to enable C button on the Japanese ROM. I went so far as to even try and copy the code from the international MRA about the C button use and put it on the Japanese one and see if it would cross over. Unfortunately, it just glitched out and made it refuse to boot. So I'm guessing the locations of whatever that is aren't compatible across the ROMs. But please make this happen because 
playing Donopachi without C button makes absolutely no sense. Disabling it is for no one other than Twin Galaxies. It makes no sense to disable it. Yeah, just enable it by default on the Japanese one. Another thing that I would love to see happen, this is kind of like a feature request, not necessarily a flaw because he's basically got it all covered now. But a cool feature request would be is if he somehow added in like a training stage select type of thing to where you could stage select and boss select. Cool thing about Donopachi is there's not a whole lot of variables, right? He could just have standard bomb fully powered up and then you just choose your ship type. I don't know how exactly how hard this would be to implement, but it would be absolutely fantastic and cool if he could. And if he did implement it, I would put up, I'd say about 150 bucks to make it happen. That isn't worth the time and labor, but it is doing the right thing and sometimes adding that little bit of extra incentive might make it happen. So if I see that, I'll PayPal him 150 bucks. But yeah, Donanpachi players rejoice. There's only one last hurdle now when it comes to playing Donanpachi on a basically official hardware. And that's convincing the Japanese event runners to allow us to use Mr. in their events. I don't think they will, but that would be pretty freaking cool because then I could play Donanpachi in Japanese events or a GDQ or something like that. Thanks so much, Null Object, for all your hard effort. I think he's going to continue this. He's probably going to do the the sibling games, which would be pretty cool, like Huangge, Donpachi. I don't know what other ones are on that same board. Esperade might be on the same board. I'm not sure. I think getting a Huangge would be really cool. And um, yeah, so uh, other than that, let me end this by thanking my patrons. So thank you to Adam Pearson, Adrian Reyes, Dingo, Handicap, Anthony A, Ben Wynn, Borgi22, Brian Shiver, Corio, Disco Stas Leia, Dominic NG, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Schmupper, How Su, Ilya, Kiwi, J Lab, JB, RPG, Joe Angelo, Game Boy Guru, K, Malays, Mark Toms, Maz, Meher Calendrian, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Nine, Okla Kugels, Philip Mason, Ram Q, Raul, Real Skeen, Sketchy Raccoon, Smacky Factor, TRM, Sugumo, Plasmo, Yishi, and Yutsukaya. Thanks for watching.